This is not how you match a dress shirt with jeans. Neither is this look. In fact, what is this guy even thinking? Now, gents, you know my stance on clothing. You are free to wear whatever you want, but I want you looking your best. And the reality is most men, when it comes to the dress shirt and jean combination, they mess it up. So, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to look your best when you wear a dress shirt and jeans. So, the first rule of wearing a dress shirt with jeans is to know thy situation. Understand the dress code. Jeans, no matter how well fitted, no matter how dark, no matter how you style them or what you wear them with, are still still a casual garment. So, if the dress code is business casual, if you're required to wear a suit, understand that jeans with a jacket is not the right combination. Now, there are exceptions, most notably unspoken dress codes, when jeans are accepted, especially locally, culturally, but in most situations, understand jeans are casual and therefore should not be worn in a formal situation. Now, perhaps the most common mistake I see when a guy's wearing a dress shirt and jeans is he doesn't match the fit. And by this, I mean when you're wearing jeans, most guys are wearing jeans that actually fit them relatively well, a little bit closer, definitely closer than dress slacks. But when it comes to dress shirts, a lot of times they wear a dress shirt that's way too large. So, when you wear this oversized dress shirt with well-fitted jeans, it really just looks off. Now, I'm not saying wear baggy jeans but I am saying pay attention to the fit. Know the name of your tailor. Take those dress shirts to get darted, to get brought in, to make sure they fit you properly the best they can when you're buying them off the rack. The next rule is to tuck in your dress shirt. Now, I know some of you guys have seen why Antonio, I've got a button down that I can wear untucked and it looks good, and that is a button down. Button up, those type of shirts, yes, but we're talking dress shirts. And I will explain the difference between a dress shirt and a button up and a button down shirt here in a few minutes. But understand, dress shirts, the more formal shirts, are meant to be tucked in. Now, how to tuck in your shirt, you may ask. Well, right here, I've got the military tuck, something I picked up in the United States Marine Corps. Simply following this procedure right here, guys, it's going to ensure that you keep your shirt tucked in most of the day. And of course, if you're tucking in your shirt, make sure to wear a belt. Now, what color, what style of belt? It really comes down to what do you want to do here. There are going to be tons of casual belt options out there in a variety of color, a variety of patterns, different belt buckles out there. But if you want to go for something a little bit dressy, I do recommend just going with a classic calf skin. You're going to either go with black, dark brown. You could even go with ox blood. And when it comes to the hardware of the belt, I do like to match metals with metals. I'm a silver guy. I'm basically cooler toned. So, when it comes to my rings, when it comes to my watches, when it comes to my belts, I gravitate towards silver. But you can change this up. It's a general rule. It's not a guideline that you always have to follow. And gentlemen, speaking of belts, I want to bring in today's sponsor, Anson Belt and Buckle. For years, I've been talking about these guys. Go back and look at my first one of my first videos I ever put on this channel was a straight up review of Anson Belt and Buckle because I love what this company is doing. It's a family run business that basically is making the belt hole obsolete. Now, Anson does this by leveraging the micro adjust system and basically this works. They've got this like little adjustments right there on the back of the belt. And what I love about this is your belt doesn't deal with any of the warping, any of the basically misshaping that happens whenever you use the old traditional hole system. I also love the interchangeability of their belts and buckles. So, let's say you pick up three belts, you pick up three buckles. Guess what? You don't have three different belts there. You have nine different combinations. And that's why I do recommend you look at their box set. They've got it so you can choose two straps, three uh, buckles, or maybe three buckles, two straps, whatever combination you want to put together. It's the best deal on their website. And speaking of deals, let's talk about why it makes such a big deal out of their customer service. So, one of you guys years ago actually cut your strap way too short. And the guy said, you know, hey, just send me another one and I'll pay for it. And Dave said, don't even worry about it, man. We've got you covered. And that's what I love about Anson Belt and Buckle is that this is a family run business that actually cares about their customers. And if you want a tough belt, if you're going to be wearing this with jeans, if you want a belt that basically you can conceal carry with, check out their Invincible Belt collection. If you want a strap that's really premium, high end, you want an Italian calfskin, you want crocodile, check out their Premier collection. And gentlemen, if you're looking to get a deal on an Anson Belt and Buckle, you need to be on their email list. Every once in a while, they've got their complete belt flash sale where they give you 20% off. However, if you want to save even more, then make sure to join their new Anson Text Club. There, you can get a notification for up to 30% off. And for a limited time, gents, I've got a special deal for you over at Anson. Use the link in the description of today's video. When you go over there, you can grab their box set for under 100 bucks. That's three buckles and two straps or three straps and two buckles, six belt combinations, all for under 100 bucks. 
All right, gents, so the next rule to properly combining dress shirt and jeans is to wear the right type of jeans. Again, jeans in of themselves are a casual garment, but there are different types of styles and cuts of jeans out there, some more casual than others. You want to gear towards the dressier jeans, if there is such a thing. So, we're talking jeans that have the right first cut. And by cut, I'm meaning you want to avoid skinny jeans. You want to avoid baggy jeans. What you're looking for is a straight cut jean. Now, there are going to be variations of this. You're going to see a slim straight cut, which is a great option if you're a little bit thinner. Maybe just want to go for a regular, a classic straight cut. This is going to be for a little bit heavier, a little bit bigger guy, a little bit more muscular guy. What if you are a heavier dude though? Definitely go for a looser straight cut. Again, we're not going for baggy jeans here, but we're going for something that's going to be a little bit looser. It's going to work with your body build. Now, when it comes to your color choices, go for darker denim in general. We're talking indigo, dark blue. You can even choose black, maybe a very dark charcoal gray, but you want to go for darker colored denim. Now, there is a time and a place for wearing maybe, you know, in a maroon, going for a dark red, maybe going for something that has a color, or even a lighter jean. I've seen this work, but you really need to know what you're doing. I think if you're just getting started, you're watching this video, really gravitating towards dark denim, in my opinion, is the best look. And let's not forget to talk about distressing, any type of design on the jean, going for a really high contrast stitch. These are things I like to avoid. Any type of, yeah, you know, type of rhinestones right there on the back of the buttocks. Let's avoid this type of look made popular by a few different brands out there. I see still guys trying to pull this off. It doesn't look good, especially if you're wearing it with a dress shirt. And by the way, when I'm talking about distressing, I'm also talking about wear and tear when you wear the denim. So, if you've had a pair of dark denim, but you've washed them plenty of times in the wash and they've faded, this may not be the best pair to keep wearing with a dress shirt. You want to go with something that's a little bit, yeah, just going to maintain its color. And let's talk about hemming. When you buy a pair of jeans, there's nothing wrong with actually getting them hemmed. There are even some companies that will do this for you. But what is bad is, yes, whenever you're starting to wear and tear that back and you've got loose threads and fraying back there, not. Nah, don't go for this look. In general, wearing a dress shirt necessitates that you dress up the denim as much as you can. So, mirroring that last point, let's now talk about choosing the right dress shirt for your denim. In the same way that denim would try to dress it up for the dress shirt, with the dress shirt, we're actually going to try to dress it down. Go for the more casual options. That means, you know, any type of dress shirt that's made for black tie, it's going to have, you know, that wingtip type of collar, it's going to have pleats in the front, it's going to use studs. You would never want to wear this type of dress shirt with denim. Now, I know the terminology can be confusing. Dress shirts versus button-ups versus button-downs. Let me try to quickly explain the difference. And I'll get back to calling everything a dress shirt. So, dress shirts are made to be layer. They're made to be an underpiece, a jacket thrown on top. A button down specifically refers to the collar and a button up is going to be any type of shirt that has buttons in the front area. And these are even shirts made from casual materials that are made in darker colors. They're made to be outerwear in this case. And that's where the confusion lies. Is it they, all these shirts, they seem very similar. They all have similar collars, turn down collars, and you're going to sometimes see even dress shirts that have button down collars. But to understand when this terminology is thrown around in general, button down and button up shirts are going to be on the casual side. And dress shirts are going to be more on the formal side. So, getting back to that formal side, what we're looking to do is, in general, if you want to wear a shirt that looks really great with denim, you're oftentimes going to lean towards the button-up shirt button downs, such as Oxford. Oxfords are an excellent option to wear with denim because they are more casual. Dress shirts are often going to be made from a poplin weave. Very light. They're going to be lighter. They're going to be very tight weaves. You're also going to see dress shirts in a variety. You know, this shirt I'm wearing right here is a dress shirt. It has the stripes going up and down. You will see occasionally checks, but usually those are going to be on more button up shirts and button down shirts that are more casual. You're also going to see occasionally shirts out there that have floral patterns, maybe and have dots. Again, those are going to be more casual, not really a dress shirt. Dress shirts, per definition, usually the color would be pure white. Now, light blue, a lot of us will see that as a dress shirt, but it's technically going to be a dressed up, a very formal type of button up shirt. And by the way, if this is super confusing, if I haven't made sense, down in the description of today's video, I'm going to link to a support article, which is going to go into more detail. So, it'll explain all this in an infographic, but understanding that terminology, I'm going to continue to go forward talking specifically just everything as a dress shirt. Now, another thing we're going to see with all of our dress shirts is that they are going to be long sleeved. Anything that is short sleeve is technically not a dress shirt. And again, you're going to see polos, you're going to see short sleeve 
button up shirts, but those are casual and they are technically not dress shirts. Dress shirts always have a cuff, which, you know, it used to be that the cuffs were removable, the same with the collars, but these collars now are pretty much permanently attached, but they are made separate. And that is a key distinction of a dress shirt and even a button down. So if you look at the fabric right here, notice how the patterns are going straight there and then they're going across here. Clearly, this cuff has been made separate. Now, we talked briefly about collars, but the dressier collar is definitely be the point collar. After that, you're going to see the spread collar. And if you understand the way a collar is designed, it's really simply the angle has been opened up on a spread collar. I like spread collars and I do think they're more casual simply because it keeps the collar out of the way. That being said, you also are going to see a button down. Button down collars are going to be more casual, made popular because of the sport of polo and you saw them on the polo fields. We also see these in Oxford shirts and a variety of casual shirts, but button down collars are going to be one of the more casual collar styles we see out there. Now, when it comes to colors and patterns, the most formal is going to be a solid white. The most informal, perhaps it's going to be, you know, something like this that has a very strong floral, brighter, heavier colors like this, darker, all that is going to be on the casual side. But going back over to the formal side, after that, maybe a light blue, we'll see whites with a stripe similar to what I'm wearing here is going to be dressier, more formal. And then as we move down, we start to see the colors come in. Now, understand if you go for anything that is a dark color, technically it is not a dress shirt. This is made to be worn as a casual button up shirt or a button down. And over on that side, I think that this all works great with denim people. Again, call them dress shirts. You go into a store, you'll maybe buy something online, they'll call it a dress shirt. But if it is of a dark color. This is technically not a dress shirt. That being said, it's something I think looks great with denim in many situations, especially, you know, if you've got the classic just dress shirt overall fit and design and it looks good on you, you can even wear this with a sports jacket. And again, it functions like a dress shirt, but that darker color or going with, you know, a small muted pattern, especially maybe a small repeating pattern. The fabric is going to make it a bit more casual and the overall design though is going to give the feeling of a dress shirt, something that can actually be worn and layered. And that takes us to the next rule of wearing a dress shirt with jeans correctly is to layer it. Unless you've got the body and it's really hot outside, I really would say in general, you look better when you layer, especially with a jacket. You got a little bit of weight around the midsection. You're a guy in your 30s, 40s, maybe. Yeah, you got the dad bod. I know for me, wearing a sports jacket just really complements look. You can also bring in a blazer, blazer dark blue with denim. I, I think it looks great, but sports jackets, in my opinion, are where it's at. There's so many different options out there, and I've talked about the power of the sports jacket. It builds up the shoulders, draws attention to the hands, slims up the silhouette, overall makes you look taller. But another option is jumpers, sweaters. So many great options out there. Cardigans, modern cardigans are not, this isn't Mr. Rogers here. This stuff with a closer fit, there are even jackets out there that are made from a sweater material. They're going to be totally unstructured. Those look really good, but simply pulling over a sweater, going for something with a V-neck right there with that dress shirt, you bring in a layered look, a pattern. I think that this right here is perfect. You can also go for a crew neck in that dress shirt, still a decent combination right there. Maybe going for a sweater vest and vest in general, especially if you're in a hotter area. I know dancers that love vests because it completes the look. They're able to wear the denim with boots on the dance floor at the same time that, you know, they've got that casual button up shirt right underneath it. It's just really, it's a great combination. All right. So really quick, let's hit some rapid fire questions. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, I have this great flannel button down and I love wearing it with a t-shirt underneath and I wear it untucked. Well, in that case, that is not a dress shirt. And if you like the look, then go for it. It's kind of stuck in the nineties, although it's making its way back. I can see that combination, but it's technically again, not a dress shirt that you're wearing untucked. Now, what about undershirts? Do you need to always wear an undershirt when you're wearing jeans and a dress shirt? I think that undershirts help lengthen the life of your dress shirt. You don't get stains on the pits wearing the right type of undershirt. We're not talking the full on sleeveless type. I do think a good undershirt as well can protect you from, you know, and not just sweat stains, but it just gives, you know, prevents the nipples from popping all that other stuff. And in the winter for me works. You don't really care about your dress shirt if you get cheaper dress shirts or if you've got some money, you don't worry about the money part. Well, okay. Now, some of you guys are saying, I know I can wear this combination, but should I wear this combination? I think where this looks really bad is when you're wearing a really formal dress shirt and casual 
denim. And that to me is like mixing oil and water. You can try to do it. You can shake it up and maybe when they're the right situation, they can kind of blend, but in the natural state, they're going to separate. If you really want to pull off this combination, again, look to dress up the denim, maybe go out and buy something that's higher end that just looks really good from a distance, almost like a dress pants. Although the fit of denim is always going to be more distinctive because one thing I love about denim is how well it fits a man in the crotch. And you know, I'm not saying the stuff that area, but what I am saying is that it lengthens the leg line. Unlike a lot of, you know, dress slacks or maybe chinos that guys own, there's too much room in the crotch. This right here makes a man look good when you've got the right pair of denim on. So, that's one of the reasons I really like this. All that being said, if you're going to try to pull this look off, look to that more casual type of button up versus the really high end, really dressy dress shirts. So, going with a dark button up is probably a better option. And technically, I know it's not a dress shirt, but when you're looking at how things are labeled online, you'll see they're called dress shirts. So, uh, that's what I'm calling them for this video. Now, if I'm wearing a dress shirt with jeans, do I actually need to iron the dress shirt? Well, if it is wrinkled, if it is not made from a wrinkle proof material or maybe a high tech fabric that doesn't deal with wrinkles, then of course, you need to iron if there are any type of wrinkles. If you don't like ironing, look to a steam press or maybe get an iron that can steam. Steaming is amazing and do a great job. Isn't going to get, you know, your collars and your cuffs perfect but it can do an excellent job in the front area, but never wear a dress shirt that is wrinkled. It just, yeah, no matter what you're wearing it with, it just, yeah, does not look good. Now, what about dress socks? You know, when you're wearing a suit, you got to wear the dress socks. Is this something that you have to wear dress socks when you're wearing the denim? I don't think you have to, especially, you know, if you're wearing type of footwear that is fully covering the socks. That being said, if you want to wear dress socks, whenever you're wearing the dress shirt and jean combination, go for it. Now, let's talk footwear. What type of shoes to wear with the dress shirt and jean combination? Combination. So, you can keep it casual. You got tons of options here. You can go with sneakers. If you're going to go with sneakers though, I would go with something a little bit dressier, maybe made from leather. You can also keep it really casual and go with boots. Preferably, I do like dress shoes, especially brogues. And I've got an entire video, which I will link to right here, in which I talk about how to match dress shoes with jeans. I think that many of you guys already have some in your wardrobe. And whether you're wearing black dress shoes, oxblood dress shoes, dark brown dress shoes, I break it out. What are the rules? How you can bring this combination together in this video right here. So, go check it out. It's a good one.